Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Chief Moore, for, for being here today. The, uh, the, sadly, I don't have enough time to talk about all the issues. I'll list, list the ones I'm not going to talk about. I, I won't be talking about the need to use our forests better for water retention. Uh, I won't be talking about the first people's opportunities to access the forest uh, because they, they can, and I hope we use more stewardship programs with them. The years-long homeless problem around Bend, Oregon, where uh, dozens if not hundreds of people have moved into Forest Service lands and, and won't leave. Uh, the challenge of notice by the, uh, or lack of proper notice uh, to neighbors along Lemon Gulch in, in and around uh, uh, Prineville, Oregon. Uh, the embarrassingly low amount of the timber harvest uh, in, the, in the Western United States and it's falling instead of going up. Uh, the cost of treatment of land, which appears to be $700 to $2,000 per acre, which puts in perspective perhaps the millions that were mentioned earlier about treating our forests. And of course, there's 90 some odd million acres of forests in the Western United States that needs help. And so you might want to add some scale to some of, of those things that you're, that you're mentioning today. The one question that I'm going to ask before I go into an example of what I do want to talk about, which is accountability and respect for private property, which is not apparent in, in many of the firefighting uh, operations that that your agency uh, either is in charge of or conducts. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But I would like you to tell us what it costs the Forest Service to fight fire per acre. The number I have is 914 bucks, which is about six times what is normal. Is that right? For putting a fire out, is that the cost per acre to put a fire out by your agency? $914. Yeah, I, I'd like to see what all you're putting into that cost uh, before I can commit on whether I think that's appropriate well, or not. Yeah, well, forget my number. What's yours? I, I, don't, I don't really have a number on what it takes. I can tell you generally, uh, based on how we're funding and what it takes, um, but you know, we've been spending uh, $2 billion on, on uh, fire suppression alone. So I, I know you've been spending it. I wanna know how you're spending it. In fact, that's, that's, the, that's what we're here for well, today. You, so I'll just ask you if you would please provide this committee with the cost per acre for the Forest Service to put out a fire. The normal phrase is the Forest Service puts out fires by dumping money on them, and they continue to dump money on them until it rains or snows. Now, that's, that's what's generally said. I hope it's not true, but I need the number. I want to talk about October 12th, actually 19th of last year, up near Seneca, Oregon. Uh, that happens to be in my district. That actually is adjacent to uh, my, one of my brother's ranching operations. Uh, and on that, day, uh, the, the, on that day, there was a, a prescribed burn started by your teams, uh, now, they gave uh, uh, basically a several hours' notice to the permittee who had cattle on that exact space, not giving them time to get the cattle out. In fact, they could see cattle from the road where the fire was started, so notice was an issue. And, and there was also what I would call cheating on the humidity test. And the way you do this, if the humidity is too low in the space you're going to do the fire, you go somewhere else and you take a test some distance away. And that's how you get around it. And the rumor was heard over the radio that that's what was going on. There's also, uh, the, when the fire was started, there ensued a debate, shall we say, that's a nice word for it, between the property owners who saw that a week earlier, when they'd been in the same place, started the same fire, uh, it had passed over a, a county highway, paved road, cars going back and forth, and started another bunch of fires. So the question was, why in the world were they doing the same thing again when nothing had changed? It was just as dry. So uh, the, there, there's, and so there was, a, there ensued a rather heated discussion, so to speak, between the landowner and the Forest Service folk that were supposed to be putting the fire, uh, was starting the fire and then controlling it. Uh, the sheriff arrived and put your Forest Service person under arrest and took him away so that things did not escalate. I saw your memos, and Mr. Chair, I'd like to offer them for the record, uh, two of them that, that, that uh, you uh, gave to your employees, uh, saying how the employees were going to be supported no matter what. And, and yeah, we have videos, the sheriff does, and other recordings of what actually went on. Maybe you've seen them. But my point here is there wasn't one word in your uh, statements to your employees about the importance of being nice to the people adjacent to your land. And that lack of respect is reprehensible. It needs to change. And if I am a total supporter of proper prescribed burns, that's the only way we're going to get rid of this total huge amount of fuel. But you can't do it without proper respect. And when you're going to burn up fences and burn up other people's trees, about 100,000 board feet, they think, of the neighbor's property burned up. Not a, not a word said about, about how to pay for it. 
and then uh, the, and, and immediately adjacent, burning up fences between the cattle and roads. That can't happen. So I'm sorry to have, have you know, go on. Oh, I'm, I'm going to stop right now, Mr. Chair, because I don't want to you know, further intrude upon time. But I must say, this is extraordinarily important. Look forward to see the, uh, the cost per acre. Uh, thank you, uh, Chief Moore. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Yield back.